So chat, how many of you guys remember a story uh, involving Representative Laureen Boebert <laughs> that happened, uh, what was it, earlier this month uh, at the time of this recording, uh, where they got kicked out of a theater uh, for getting a little bit too touchy-feely with a date uh, in a theater. Uh, apparently it was like a showing of like uh, a traveling show of like Beetlejuice or something like that. And uh, basically like she got kicked out of the theater because she was vaping in the theater. She was being very disruptive by taking pictures while in the theater. And uh, interestingly, uh, more so is the fact that uh, her date was like groping her in the theater, like grabbing on her breasts. And uh, she decided to like reach down to his crotch and uh, give him a little bit of a a little bit of a tug job in the theater, surrounded by families and kids and shit like that. Uh, really, uh, not uh, not very good stuff to be doing uh, in that situation. Uh, but uh, yeah, I'll kind of do a quick read up on this situation. This isn't the main topic we're talking about here, <clears throat> but yeah. It says, Representative uh, Laureen Boebert's night inside a Denver theater was way more handsy than it initially appeared. New video shows her groping her date's crotch as he aggressively paws at her breast. Uh, in the new surveillance video clip recorded Sunday night during a performance of Beetlejuice, Boebert's date first reaches over to fondle her right breast, and mo almost immediately she puts uh, a hand in between his legs. The groping of her chest continues throughout the clip, and eventually the U.S. Congresswoman... This is a Congresswoman, chat. This is, this, is a, this is a Congresswoman engaging in this behavior in a fucking public place. Jeez. Um, puts her hand in his crotch as well. As we previously reported, other clips revealed Bober uh, was also illegally vaping inside the theater, something she had denied, and then eventually got her and her date kicked out of the performance. Uh, for good measure, she flipped off a theater employee on the way out. Oh, shit! Oh, shit. Okay, so this was a funny story that literally happened not too long ago, but this is not the story we're talking about uh, today chat. I actually want to direct your guys' attention to this article on Advocate. And uh, this is what we're going to be talking about today. And we're also going to be reacting to a clip uh, in relation to this. But it says, Laurie Bobert under fire for horrify horrifying, excuse me, transphobic comments about Pentagon official chat. Oh, shit. Oh, shit. Oh, shit. More transphobia. Tons of transphobia in the news lately. Uh, you gotta love it, right? Uh, amid a climate of heightened political tension and controversial statements, Republican U.S. Representative Lorraine Boebert of Colorado drew sharp criticism during a House debate over defense appropriations Wednesday. Specifically, Boebert aimed uh, Assistant Secretary of Defense for Readiness, Sean Skelly, the highest ranking transgender official at the Pentagon. Now, before we continue, if you're not familiar with uh, Sean Skelly, I'll actually bring up their Wikipedia article so I can educate you guys a little bit on who they are. <clears throat> Sean Graham Skelly, born 1966, is a retired United States Navy officer, national security expert, and LGBT rights advocate who is currently serving as the Assistant Secretary of Defense for Readiness since July 27, 2021. During the administration of President Barack Obama, she served as Director of the Executive's uh, Secretariat as the U.S. Department of Transportation. Um... And from 2013 to 2016, as a special assistant for the Undersecretary of Defense for Acquisition, Technology, and Logistics. In 2017, she was appointed by Obama to the National Commission on Military, uh, National, and Public Service, making her one of the highest profile openly transgender presidential appointees in U.S. history. In 2017, Out Magazine named Skelly as its list of 100 most influential LGBT Americans. In November of 2020, <clears throat> Skelly was appointed to President-elect Joe Biden's transition team for the Department of Defense. In July of 2021, Skelly was confirmed as Assistant Secretary of Defense for Readiness by voice vote. So that's who we're talking about here, Chad. Let's go ahead and let's go back to the article so we can find out exactly what happened. Bobert introduced an amendment to reduce Skelly's salary to a mere dollar. Oh, shit! Oh, shit! arguing that Skelly was failing at her job and a symbol of, quote, wokeism. Oh, shit, chat. She's too woke. 
In her remarks, Boebert went as far as to misgender Skelly, offensively asserting this delusional man thinking he is a woman embodies and espouses the wokeism that's causing significant harm to our military readiness and troop morale. She further argued that Skelly's presence and policies were a distraction from the military's primary mission, urging her colleagues to, quote, restore the focus of our Department of Defense to defend our nation, unquote. Minnesota Representative Betty McCollum offered a solid rebuttal to Boebert's statements. McCollum emphasized the correct pronouns while speaking about Skelly and focused on the admirable service the LGBTQ plus individuals provide in the military, she declined to engage in hateful rhetoric, a clear counter to Boebert's approach based. Now, I'm not going to read the rest of this article, but we do have the video of this. This is a video by Forbes Breaking News. This is Breaking News. Lorraine Boebert promotes amendment to drop trans Pentagon official salary to $1. Uh, we're going to go ahead. We're going to do a little bit of gaming while reacting to this video. So without further ado, pa, 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 pa. play that shit. Here we go. Mr. Chair, I rise today to offer my amendment that utilizes the Holman rule to reduce the salary of Sean Kelly, Assistant Secretary of Defense for Readiness. That salary shall be reduced to $1. As the Assistant Secretary of Defense, Mr. Skelly is the principal advisor to the Secretary of So right from the jump, Mr. Skelly, just instantly with the misgender chat. Right from the jump. And you know what's crazy about this? Yeah, you know, I'm not I'm not gonna get into it. I'm getting ahead of myself. Let's continue. Defense and the Undersecretary of Defense for personnel and readiness on all matters related to the readiness of our armed forces. In that capacity, he is supposed to develop policies and plans, provide advice, and make recommendations for total force readiness programs. Reporting and assessments of readiness to execute the national defense strategy. Like many of Biden's bureaucrats, Mr. Skelly is failing at his job and the basic responsibilities. On his watch, the Army missed their recruiting goal by 15,000 soldiers last year, and all other branches were forced to dig deep into their pools of delayed entry applicants to meet their recruitment goals. On top of that, the Army, Navy, Air Force, and Coast Guard are all expected to fall short of their recruitment goals this year. Mr. Skelly has also been with the Biden administration since the beginning and was appointed to the transition team. Some irony there. In November of 2020, as the Assistant Secretary of Defense for Readiness, Mr. Skelly played an instrumental role in the disastrous and shameful... You know, I said I was going to wait, but like, I, I got to say this now. Like, chat, this is the kind of like, you know, very petty misgendering and like outright bigotry that you would expect to see on like Elon's Twitter chat like you would totally expect this kind of behavior online not at a fucking congressional hearing like these people are supposed to be fucking professionals and like th this is how far the hatred towards trans people has have gotten we literally have people in public office spouting transphobia during a train tr uh, 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 a congressional hearing it's it's unreal withdrawal from Afghanistan that killed 13 of America's finest, 13 American heroes, this embarrassing surrender to the Taliban. As DOD's highest ranking trans official, this delusional man thinking he is a woman embodies and espouses the wokeism that causes that's causing significant harm to our military readiness and troop morale. The military shouldn't be fo focused on this woke. Brady in the chat says this hurts to listen to. Yeah, I couldn't. I the first time I because I watched a little bit of this clip. I haven't watched the whole thing, but I've watched a little bit of this clip. And the first time, like I I watched this, my jaw was dropped the whole time because again. You expect this kind of like hatred and bigotry 
in like online spaces. You know, we if you've been if you spent a you know a decent amount of time on Twitter, you see this kind of shit on Twitter every fucking day. Even like on online like platforms like YouTube, right? Like a lot of you guys are watching this on YouTube. Uh, even on online platforms like that, you see this kind of shit all the time. But again, we're talking about an elected official, right? We're talking about somebody who holds political fucking office in a congressional hearing, literally spreading hate speech in front of everybody in the room. You, you don't expect to see that kind of shit in this setting, yet here we are. Here we are. Agenda and combating climate change. And with Mr. Skelly at the helm of readiness, these misguided policy pursuits will continue to be at the forefront of DOD's priorities. I urge my colleagues to support my amendment to restore the focus of our Department of Defense to defend our nation. And Mr. Chair, without our reserve. Lady. Let's be honest, chat. Let's be honest about the reason uh, she's targeting Skelly. It, it doesn't. It doesn't have anything to do with what they believe is them not being able to perform their duties. They made it crystal clear what their actual intentions are here when they proceeded to multiple times misgender and disrespect Skelly. This is about the fact that they're targeting someone who's trans. They're targeting her specifically because she's trans, trying to cut her salary to $1 a year, chat. $1 a year. And just coming up with this like, oh, well, we feel like she's not performing uh, her duties and therefore like we need to cut her salary. No, you're targeting them because they're trans and you have a hatred for trans people. Let, let's be honest about what it is. He reserves. For what purpose does the gentle lady from Minnesota seek recognition? Mr. Chair, I rise in the strongest opposition to this amendment. This is uh, Betty McCollum, I believe. Instantly comes out and speaks out against what Laureen Bobert just said. Listen to this shit. And people deserve to be treated with dignity and respect when being addressed. Let's fucking go. Oh, shit. Oh, shit. Assistant Secretary Skelly has served in her role admirably as she has done as her time as a naval officer. Assistant Secretary Skelly is a naval fighter uh, uh, naval for over 20 years. And, I, you know, I, I, I am a little upset because the, the, the lack of respect that has been shown to Secretary uh, Kelly by the last speaker is surprising for me on this House floor, which we hold in such high esteem. A naval flight officer for 20 years, including time spent in the Pacific. Well, See, that's what I'm saying. Again, this is a, this is a congressional hearing, right? And you expect uh, the people who are in this setting to behave like professionals, right? You don't expect to see the kind of like toxic hate speech that you see on fucking Twitter to take place in an environment like that. And so when you're watching this unfold in front of you, you're just like dumbfounded, genuinely fucking dumbfounded. I, I kid you not. The first time I saw this, I, I, I couldn't believe what I was seeing. I was like, am I watching Am I watching a Nick Fuentes broadcast right now? No, this is a congressional hearing. Holy shit. We're all important how important this region is right now. There's absolutely no basis for this amendment. The colleague who offers this amendment provides no real substantive reason why Assistant Secretary Kelly should have her salary reduced. Thank you for the membership. There's only one reason why Thank Assistant you. Thank you for that membership. the Nation. Thank you very much for that membership. I do appreciate it. Also, Meme Gazer, I forgot to shout out your uh, super chat earlier. Thank you for that. I appreciate it. Secretary uh, Kelly is being targeted is because she is simply a woman. Yep. I have fought long and hard with many women before me and with our allies for pay equity. We still have a long way to go, but I'm never going to vote to reduce a woman's salary. I urge my colleagues to vote no, and I reserve the balance of my time. 
the gentle lady. Let's fucking go, chat. I, I, I love the way she didn't just sit by and let that shit just like fly. You know what I mean? I understand like when they're in these like, you know, congressional hearings or whatever, when somebody's speaking, you can't like interrupt them or whatever. But like, I like how like after Bobert was done saying the dumb shit she had to say, McCollum steps in and is like, no, this is not, this is not okay. H how dare you disrespect someone like that? From Colorado, no. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I guess delusion runs deep in the Democrat Party. Um, I would, uh, I would go on the record to say that um, science is a friend in this case. And um, sure, if you want to call Mr. Skelly a her, his chromosomes are still X Y, and um, we trust. The I just think it's funny how, like, you know, these dipshit fucking, you know, conservatives that are like genuinely hateful. They'll always say like, oh, science is on our side, except it's not like literally like the entire like medical and academic community all agrees that gender dysphoria exists. Trans people are valid, right? And so like, I always laugh when they make this statement of how like science is on their side because it's not, it, it's absolutely fucking not science over here rather than delusion and playing dress up and imaginary uh, games with our military readiness. Our military needs to be lethal and able to defend our national security, not pander to the woke extremist left and make up fairy tales. Mr. Chair, I reserve. The generator. I feel like I'm watching a fucking quartering video right now, chat. Like, I never thought I would see the day where I would see an actual politician use the term woke. I remember the first time I was listening to, um, oh, what was it, that Twitter I space that DeSantis did to announce his presidential run? Um, he, he uttered the term That's woke so ideology. Nice. And I was like, That's me. I never thought I would hear the day no. that... Don't one of these politicians would say that shit, no and difference. yet here we are. You we're literally just like it's it's us. nuts. We're we're in clown world. Reserves the gentle lady from Minnesota is recognized. Mr. Chair, the mayor's daughter. when it comes to service of our country, to there's a couple of things her. we ask from people but I to take a loyalty miserably. oath. They do that to pay to, to pass basic uh, training she and to be up true. and fit for the job that that they're they're Still called upon to do. Sure. They do that. Secretary Skelly qualifies in all well, those areas. And as far as uh, the, uh, like the conversation oh, that my colleague is having, I'm not going to engage in hateful rhetoric, in uh, Mr. Speaking, Chair. Instead, oh, I want to focus I, on the I, admirable I, service the brain, that our transgender, gay, bisexual people. members do in an all-voluntary army. They volunteer to put their lives on the line. They deserve the dignity and respect this house can give them. And with that, I reserve the balance of my time. Let's fucking go. Again, like, I, I, I really love the fact that, like, McCollum is, like, speaking out against this shit. Not tolerating it. Not just standing by while this shit is being said. Like, literally speaking out against it. We're witnessing it right before our eyes it's i i i can't get over the I, I i i literally can't get over the fact that we're literally watching this kind of shit happen during a congressional hearing it's unreal gentle lady from colorado is recognized thank thank you mr chair i i just want the record to reflect that there's nothing hateful about truth and uh, again, I do urge my colleagues to support my amendment to restore the focus of our Department of Defense to defend our nation. Uh, and uh, so I, I look forward to um, this Holman rule being utilized to reduce the salary of Secretary Sean uh, Skelly, uh, the Assistant Secretary of Defense for Readiness, to one dollar. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I yield. Leon, the gentleman yields back. The, the gentle lady from Minnesota is recognized. Well, I'm, I'm uh, 
just baffled here that we can pick and choose what, what's science, what's not science, what is My human rights class. and dignity that's and nice. respect, and what is not human rights Sherry. and dignity and respect. You know and I look forward to having the discussion on climate change based on science with the gentlewoman from Colorado at some point in time. And with that, the Mr. Speaker, at this point, I thank all our servicemen and women for their service, their families that serve alongside of them, and I yield back. General Levy yields back. Jeez. She turned a con uh, she turned Congress into a trans debate. Yeah, I literally feel like I'm watching like you know a conservative and a progressive like debate bro on like some streaming platform debate trans issues. Like that's literally what this feels like right now. What was that? Holy shit! The question is on the amendment offered by the general lady from Colorado. All those in favor say aye. All opposed say no. In the opinion of the chair, the ayes have it. The amendment is agreed to. Mr. Mr. Chair. The gentlelady from Minnesota is recognized. I would like to request the roll call vote. Pursuant to Clause 6 of Rule 18, further proceedings on the amendment offered by the gentlelady from Colorado will be postponed. It is now in order to consider Amendment Number 153 of Part Alpha of House Report 118, TAC 216. For what purpose does the gentlelady from Colorado seek recognition? Mr. Chair, I have an amendment at the desk. The clerk will designate the amendment. Amendment number 153, printed in Part A of House Report number 118-216, offered by Mrs. Bobert of Colorado. Pursuant to House Resolution 723, the gentlewoman from Colorado, Ms. Bobert, and a member opposed, each will control five minutes. The chair recognizes the gentlewoman from Colorado. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I rise in favor of my amendment, which will reduce the salary of Normal Dillard, Director of Diversity and Inclusion Management at the Office of Diversity, Equity, and Inclusion of the Department of Defense to $1. Norval Rock Dillard is a part of the Joe Biden and Lloyd Austin's attempt to woken and weaken our military. He works in an office that... So, like, her whole objective there was literally to target anything she deems to be woke, basically. Should not exist, doing a job that also should not exist. Our military is not a social experiment, and we definitely should not be treating it like one or spending taxpayer dollars to do so. Woke ideology undermines military readiness. It undermines cohesiveness by emphasizing differences based on race, ethnicity, and sex. It undermines leadership authority by introducing questions about whether promotion is based on merit or quota requirements. It leads to military personnel serving in special- Heavy girl in the chat says, woken and weak in our military. Uh, this lady is straight up using Newspeak. Yeah, it, it's like I said earlier, these are like the kind of like, you know, terminologies you would expect from like, you know, online message boards full of like genuinely like hateful people. You don't expect to hear this shit like in a professional political setting, but we're literally watching it happen before our very eyes right now. It's, it's insane. It's fucking insane. Specialty areas for which they are not qualified or ready. It takes time and resources away from training activities and weapons development to contribute to readiness. Unelected bureaucrats at the DOD need to be held responsible for their failed leadership, which has distracted from DOD's- Oh my God, Celestial Heart in the chat says, this is what happens when you let your kids eat paint chips. <laughs> That's funny. Not gonna lie, that's pretty fucking funny. Mission and jeopardized the United States military's ability to defend our country. From the botched Afghanistan withdrawal that left 13 American soldiers dead to the implementation of a woke agenda that has weakened our military and caused recruitment to suffer, bureaucrats like Norville Dillard have continued to put leftist agendas ahead of our national member on the chat says we spend more on developing weapons than literally anything else in our budget yes very very true all security the federal government's obsession with diversity equity and inclusion needs to come to an end especially at dod where our brave service members volunteer to put themselves in harm's way to fight for freedom 
They don't care about the- Heavy Gretel in the chat also makes a good point. The Afghan withdrawal was uh, Trump. Yeah, that was under his leadership. So like, for them to make this like it's a Biden issue, it was literally under Trump's leadership that that took place. Jeez. Skin color of their brothers and sisters in uniform. They care about completing the mission and going home to their families. Our Defense Department should have the same mindset. I urge my colleagues to support my amendment to restore the focus of our Department of Defense to defend our nation. Mr. Chair, I reserve. The gentlelady reserves. What purpose does the gentlelady from Minnesota seek recognition? Mr. Chair, I rise in strongest opposition to this amendment. The gentlelady is recognized for five minutes. Dr. Dillard has dedicated his life to service to the United States. Commissioned in the United States Army in 1981, he served for 26 years, a retired colonel after numerous command and staff positions. And I thank him for his service. His current position is Director of Diversity and Inclusion. He provides oversight and guidance to individuals working across the Department of Defense on these issues. And he has the experience to know where improvement can be made. The goals of the Office of Diversity and Equity and Inclusion promote the Department of Defense culture of dignity, respect, and values diversity and inclusion and readiness imperatives. The Department executes Secretary of Defense direction to, quote, take care of our people. And that's about supporting both the service member and their family, regardless of who they are. It's about having their backs while they put their lives on the line in the defense of this country. The chairman and others in this room are fond of Ronald Reagan's so-called, and I'll offer up the quote, government's first duty is to protect the people, not to ruin their lives. Rather than trying to run the lives of each service member um, into the ground, let us concentrate on what should be the focus of this bill, ensuring that our military service members have the tools they need to defend our nation and to come home safely. Need I remind everyone in the room, we are in the middle of a recruitment crisis, and the chair and I have heard why we're in the middle of a recruitment crisis. And many companies, private businesses, are in the middle of a recruitment crisis. And what are they doing? They are opening up positions for diversity and inclusion to make sure people know that they're welcome in their companies. We want to make sure that people are welcome in the Department of Defense. We must find ways to attract young people to choose. Heavy to Gretel in the chat says the military functions better if the troops aren't trying to lynch each other based on race, gender, orientation, inclusion, uh, and equality is extremely important in the military. Yeah, exactly. Right. Because like, these are people that they're supposed to like, be able to like depend on each other. Right. They're supposed to be able to work together with a common goal of defending this country. Right. And if we are in a position where these people are like constantly like attacking their own, like, how is that going to allow them to focus on the goal together of defending this country? It's not going to allow them to do that very efficiently. So it makes sense to serve this country, to know that their service will be honored. If they feel that serving in different branches of the department will open them up to ridicule, disrespect, or worse, why would they volunteer to serve and put their life on the line? Mr. Dillard is trying to ensure that all feel welcome and that he should- Every girl in the chat says, yeah, they need to do the whole teamwork sure. thing in life and death situations. Absolutely. You so know, worried. teamwork is something that's like a valuable lesson that's learned in pretty much like okay. any position, but especially monster, if you're in the military where you guys go. are working together in literally like in a lot no. of situations, like literally life-threatening situations, right? What's the matter? Should not be vilified me? for that. He should be applauded. Hey, gay fashion, Let's how's it going? stop the attacks on building a diverse daddy. force that He's represents all of America. Mr. Chair, name. I remember as a young high school student, daddy, I'm not afraid to admit my age monsters. with my gray hair, 1972, all the discussions about women in the military academy. That was a radical Wait, idea. Sherry, don't go alone. You know what the military had to do? They had Sherry, to go out Sherry. and they had to recruit and they had to show that they wanted the diversity, they wanted the respect. And I'm proud I do that with my military academies where I have Hmong 
and African Americans and people from different sexual orientations apply to serve in our country. They put their lives on the line. Duty first for them. So let's stop attacks on building a diverse force. And I urge my colleagues to vote no on this amendment, and I reserve the balance of my time. The gentlelady reserves. The gentlelady from Colorado is recognized. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, my colleagues on the other side of the aisle agree that there is a recruitment crisis. Why is that? I think it's because our brave men and women who put their lives on the line to serve our nation dutifully, with honor, they don't see a true commander in chief in office. They don't see true leadership that they could be proud to serve alongside, to serve under. I don't believe that our brave men and women see that they will be taken care of when they put their lives in harm's way to defend our nation, to defend our allies throughout the world. Let me ask my colleagues a broad question. This office of diversity, equity, and inclusion, did that save our 13 service members in Afghanistan, or did it distract from the actual mission I heard from my colleagues, Mr. Chair, on the other side of the aisle that this was a way to ridicule and disrespect. Well, I think it is ridiculing to promote someone who does not have the qualifications needed for a position just because of how they identify their race. This is what's ridiculing. This is what is disrespectful. And I see this woke agenda. You want to talk about what's disrespectful. Wasn't it disrespectful to all those families who were in that theater while you were jerking off your fucking date? Oh, shit. Oh, Literal shit. kids were in that room. Like, what the fuck is the matter with you? This DEI, this, this movement that the left has created, I see it as a way to erase women. I heard my colleague on the other side of the aisle talk about in the 1970s there was a recruitment effort to bring more women to our military. And if that were the case today, if that were the mission today to offer a more diverse military and recruit more women, well, my colleagues on the other side of the aisle would simply put men in a dress. Spooky kid and lol, she's the one who was doing that. Yes, this is the same woman, the one who got kicked out of a theater for vaping in the theater. Yeah for being genuinely that? disruptive by like taking pictures Sherry, and shit like that okay? and allowing her date to like grope her breasts while she jerked him off. Yes. Oh, shit. Okay. That's the same one, yes. Him. Put them in heels. I did find something else for Heck, you. I got some red lipstick Here. you could borrow. But that's not the answer. The answer is readiness. Thanks, sweetie. The answer. Now, why don't you come over here? I want you to is that we are all me. equal under the law, and you do not promote someone simply because Claire, of these qualifications. The Mr. Anymore. Chair, I urge adoption Don't of I'll my amendment, and I yield. I gentle lady yields back. The gentle lady from Minnesota is recognized. Mr. Speaker, Wait, may I inquire back. how much Sherry, time I have? Sherry, Sherry. Uh, excuse me, Mr. Chair. The gentle lady has one uh, minute and thirty seconds remaining. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Well. Some of the remarks, Mr. Chair, that my colleague made, I'm not even going to bother to respond to because I don't think they are appropriate for this august chamber in which we are in. The military only takes people who are qualified to serve. And then after they've done their service... Lukaku, the chest is a race of women, more Melanie Mack. Yeah, we literally just watched the Melanie Mack video where she was making, like, turf arguments against transgender women being allowed to compete in a League of Legends tournament. And we're hearing that same shit from Lorraine Boebert here, literally talking about, like, the erasure of women. Like, nobody's erasing women, Okay. We're making, you know, people who serve in the military who deserve just as much respect as any other serviceman or woman to have a space where they feel comfortable serving. And I just like I didn't have an issue with an initiative being put in place in LCS that allowed transgender women to compete in League of Legends. I don't have an issue with policies being in place that allow you know, transgender people or really anyone of a minority group to be able to serve in the military and feel comfortable doing so.
I, I genuinely don't see a problem with that. This for our country, they should still be respected. This is a very sad conversation that we are having. And I go back to the fact about diversity. And I'll use the example of the Hmong in my community who fought along our soldiers in Vietnam and, and, and protected many, many, and rescued many, many of our pilots. They came here, they didn't have a written language. They came here, they didn't know about military academies. And they wanted to honor and serve our country, but they weren't quite sure how to go about it. So what did we do? We created opportunities for diversity and inclusion. And it's amazing when you put a hand out to somebody and say, you know, we want you to be part of this great nation. And you're willing to put your life on the line. We thank you for that. Um, the chair and I know why we have a recruitment problem. I understand why we have a recruitment problem. I serve on Thanks the committee, for the money, and I'm doing everything simp. I can. Thank you. Jenna Nix donated five Canadian dollars. Couldn't stick around, but caught you live for the first time. Thank you very much for the super chat. I do appreciate it. And to address it, and part of it is this office. The gentlelady's time has expired. The gentlelady yields back. The question is on the amendment. Okay, so, yeah, chat. I thought we'd take a look at that because, again, like, when I first saw this clip, when it kind of, like, came to my attention, I was appalled at what I was hearing happen at a congressional hearing. I know I sound like a broken record right now, chat, but... When I saw this, I was like, these are the same kind of talking points you hear in very hateful spaces on the internet, okay? And you expect that sort of thing on Twitter, on various different online message boards where people say very hateful shit, especially towards like trans people. You expect to see those kind of things in these spaces. You don't expect politicians in a professional setting to engage in that same kind of rhetoric yet here we have like we've seen video proof of it Lorraine Boebert literally spouting hatred and bigotry towards trans people in in a congressional hearing I'm I'm at a loss for words I literally can't believe what we just saw chat